The first one's the hardware assembly guide, which is what we're going to be going to, uh, going through together. It outlines like you know step by step how to build these units. Um, there's a bunch of part numbers. We'll go through those together. But essentially, at each desk, there's uh, enough parts for two units, and then all the miscellaneous parts will be scattered somewhere over there. It's kind of like a treasure hunt. You know, have some fun with it. Um, and then the second link is D work. So we've actually like the way we're doing these meetups is we're incentivizing people to build these nodes. Um, so we set up somewhat like a DAO structure. Um, D work is how we facilitate uh, the payments of different tasks. And if you actually go there, there's a thirty dollar film reward if you write a fifteen question test, right? Based yep. on today's work. So if anyone wants to take that bounty right now and start on it, thirty dollars on the phone, just sitting there. That'd be fun. Um, Question: Can multiple people do it? I think I don't know. I no, I set it up so just one person. Okay, this is just one person. So the first one to complete it, come <laughs> find me. We'll get that out. Yeah, I guess anybody um, that's interested should probably just come talk to us. Yeah, afterwards here, and we'll make sure not multiple people. And if there is multiple people, you, you all can split it. Or yeah. whatever. Is there anyone that wants to do that right now? Just raise your hand. I'll just consider. <laughs> all right, rock paper scissors. Can we do rock paper scissors? I'm already on number one. So. Oh. All right. Oh. Oh. Hey guys, that's good. Bird. Awesome. <laughs> hey, Chad. Okay. Yeah, we want to need the Wi Fi. What's up? We need the Wi Fi. Wi Fi. So, the Wi Fi uh, SSID should be CDC 1200 5G. And the password is going to be over there. The password is go navy go. Capital, all, the first letter, all cap. The first letter is a cap, so capital G O. Navy go. Capital N. Capital G. And then 2019 exclamation. Nice. What is it? It's go, go, maybe go with the caps. Yep. 2019 exclamation. There it is. Awesome. Cool. Let's get that right from the center. Sweet. Okay. So I have that password. Um, real quick, does everybody have the first thing set? Or is, are we dead? What's the second one? The second one is uh, bit.ly slash phone dwork. Um, so I'll just give a quick preview. Uh, actually, I'll let Barry jump into the phone you, guide. You. Um, if you want to talk about it, Barry, and then we can just get started. I think before we jump into that, I want to show over the map for everybody. Call yeah. on an audible. Sorry? Call on an audible. Call on an audible. I can find where my computer is. Okay. There. In the meantime, I'll keep these guys up and then. Uh, oh, cool down. Wow. Um, Let's get started. Community. Solving problems together. Um, while they're getting started, if anybody has any questions, just raise your hand and I'll uh, get can help out. <laughs> So to, to organize that, we've created this um, shared map, uh, Google map, and um, and so if, if y'all would just uh, drop any potential locations that you know of that might work for uh, putting these nodes on, um, this is like these are potential locations, right? So like, well, if we like one of your potential locations, we'll chat with you and maybe try to make it happen. Um, ideas for this is. Like your house, you can put if, if you're willing to put one of these on top of your roof. Um, ideas for this would be like um, if you have any business contacts for rooftops, um, like major commercial buildings, anything, um, anything that has like a little bit of height is nice. Um, but basically, just anywhere that you know of that with people that um, that would be willing that, that that you know well enough to to to, to be asking. Um, if you know have friends in commercial real estate um, or anything like that, that would be great. I think um, we're still working out like 
DAO wise, like what kind of incentive so there will be there, but I think this will probably be, um, at least in the short term, just like um, a maybe a small phone payout. I don't know how large. Um, we we got to talk to Nerd about what that's going to be. Do you want to just give a quick like outline of what these locations are for, so people that miss the first yeah, thing that they're yeah, like, wait, yeah. talking about Good hardware, or talking Good about call. location. Okay, so phone proof of location, um, a way using radio to prove that you were somewhere that you said you were. So, um, it, many people are familiar with Helium. It's, it runs on a very similar um, radio to Helium. The big difference is that there's uh, very precise clocks in these things, and they can do location proofs. So they can triangulate your location. It's actually not a triangle, it's in 3D space, so it's, I don't know what the word is for that, but um, that's why we have to have four nodes to create a zone anchor, is because in order to figure out exactly where you were, you gotta have, you are, you have, to have four of these nodes come to conclusion on where you are. Um, so that's basically the essence of it. Um, we have to put up these four radio nodes and then they'll all be in communication with each other and then also in communication with anybody on the ground that wants to prove where they are on the ground. Um, that's that's the, the basics of it. And so, um, like, major difficulty here is just finding four of these locations. And I guess um, I'm glad you brought it up, Chad, because I hadn't mentioned like what the basic parameters are. Um, minimum distance between these things, like a couple hundred feet probably, maybe a little less than that. Um, like so, a very large rooftop, we could probably put two on the same on either end of the rooftop uh, if we had like a large commercial building. Um, maximum distance, that's a little bit of what the, the this beta program is for, is to kind of get get a vibe for that. Um, Roughly, I think it's 3,000 meters. So, like a mile or two, um, I think. Um, so, so somewhere in that in that range. And I we in the um, in that Bitly link, there's they have a link to um, how to talk to owners and how to figure things out with uh, landowners. One of the options here is, like, I think we can actually, if, if we're willing to do the work, I think a phone is willing to help us pay these landowners um, to help sponsor it. Um, it, it just requires uh, extra paperwork with foam, et cetera, et cetera. But w if the time comes and we can't talk somebody into it, but we think some money will motivate them, I, I think we could definitely pull that off. So kind of, say, I think kind of the way I see this happening is maybe we nail down uh, two or three locations that are within good area of each other, and maybe we got to hustle one or two more and just start knocking on doors or um, figuring out like figuring out some way to get those other two locations. Is kind of um, the, the the essence of kind of where I see this happening. Ideally, though, if we have enough community interaction, I think we could get enough pins on this map where um, we could probably find people that would be willing to, to do it. I, I actually already started one of these maps, and uh, with, with a couple of a couple of other friends that have a lot of contacts, and um, I didn't. I, I just started a new one here because I I wasn't sure they would be okay with me sharing the pins, um, and and so kind of and and I after thinking about that I was like oh well probably everybody else is going to feel the same way. So I think um, when when you go to put pins on this map, don't feel like you got to put your full name. Just put enough information on there that we can find you if we like where that pin is. Um, maybe a Discord handle or uh, something, something that is that something where we can get a, a phone number, an email. How do we get uh, to that map? Yeah, email. yeah. So uh, I'm about to share that. Let's do that right now. Uh, One step ahead. Man. It's in the Discord. <laughs> Look at that. I speak nerd. It's got it in the Discord. Is everybody in the Discord, actually? If they're not, we're not full of them. Oh actually, we have our Discord wizard here. We'll only shame you for a few seconds. It's okay. <laughs> Wait, you can see Discord? Yes. Okay, there's not a phone Discord. No. Um, this we, we have a, a spot within the EFSD for a phone. Um, I mean, the phone, phone actually does have a Discord if you're like super interested and you want to get out and follow, start following that Discord. Which I imagine a few people in the room that are probably going to want to be there, and we can we can get you in there. 
Um, but for now, I want to show you how, you know, how, how this map works. You can see I've, I've dropped a couple of pins. I've got my current place of residence up here, and then I also put um, my past place of residence where I know everybody. Yeah. Do these all have to be rooftop accessible? Not necessarily, not necessarily. So if we have like somebody with a balcony on one of these places downtown, <coughs> they just need to all four be line of sight to each other is the big deal. Mm. They all four have to be line of sight. So if we had like one of these like apartment buildings downtown, that would be fine. We could use that as long as there wasn't something on the, as long as one of our locations was on the other side. So if you do put something like that, but it's gonna be one directional, we need to know that what direction you're facing. Um, but yes, ideally we're on the rooftop of somewhere and we can go to 360, I think. But like, I think, actually, ideally we just have four locations that can see each other. Like, it's a good, great first starting spot. <laughs> um, and then, I, like long-term vision, once you get these four this is anchors, it's pretty easy to start adding, adding them to. Like, you don't, like, just have line, have line of sight, I think, to three of them then, um, to add up. I, I don't, actually don't even know that. I, I don't know the details on, on the fifth note and the sixth and so on. But um, <laughs> that's getting ahead of ourselves. So if you want to, uh, if you want to, like, the way you add a pin to this map is you just go up and search the way you normally would with Google Maps and say, like, oh, we want to go to uh, Ace Hardware. So, I was just at Ace with an online Ace Hardware. Okay, that. And then, um, and then you can say add a map right here, and then you can add details. So you'll say add a map, and you can say um, you can edit right here, and then um, and you can say vary. Like that, and then that's all we need. And then if we decide that whatever location you provide, can I delete it now, please? Yeah. Yeah. You have to use the pop-up. It's immutable. <laughs> there we go. Um, <laughs> chase on chain. So, uh, so um, but one, one more time, Barry, how do we get to the map? It's in the Discord, but then what channel in the Discord? Um, in the froth channel, would be Paul. Um, okay, so we go to the Froth channel here. Under Foam. <laughs> foam SD. Mm, look at that channel. We need Froth and Foam SD. Um, and yeah, that's, that's where you get there. And we set it so that anybody can do it, so just don't, don't be malicious. Just <laughs> please. <laughs> Pretty please. <laughs> don't don't Take stress testing. Not okay. <laughs> no, no zero days, please. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so the best way to do it is just to search right here for whatever location you have available. So, um, and then you choose it, and then you'll go to add a map right there. There you go. And then you can down here hit edit, and you've got the option to uh, change the name or whatever and put some information so we can get a hold of you. How permanent do we want these locations ideally? Um, I think we'll we'll be okay with a year or two, right? Like I think hopefully we can have if we establish it, we can have it for a year or two. I think is a, is a good uh, again like, but we'll take we'll basically take whatever we can get. I think it's really really what what what. And then I think the other thing is is like if we had if one of our locations decided to go down, we can do the hustle thing and like really work on getting somebody that is going to work with us within whatever area. Um, it's just a matter of um, it's just a matter of like really establishing the zone first, you know. Um, that'll be a, that'll be a good day. Um, yeah, if you guys have any idea, other ideas for like how to do something different on the map, et cetera, et cetera, I'm totally down to for input. But um, like this is gonna be tremendously helpful if we can get um, get people to. Um, work with this map and just add potential spots. Um, so, like I said, think about friends, family members, um, like business owners that you know. Um, cool professors. Yeah, cool <laughs> professors. If we can get UCSD on board, that would be sick. Um, uh, like, or if, if you can just think of any potential location. And I, I've got a lot of pins for my buddies that I'm, that I'm going to drop up here. Um, and, and then, like, 
you might we might start getting ideas within like an area, and then we can really focus on it and try to get like everybody like at the next meetup. We can be like, hey, we got this one spot that's looking really good. Does anybody know anything of any, about anybody in this area? And we can kind of really try to um, start reaching out to contacts in, in that area. Any questions? Are we able to provide incentive and pitch and go door to door, or is that not an option? No, that's totally an option, and um, we just gotta talk talk about it. Um, Nerd is like our primary DAO guy for this, okay. um, so so like any ideas around governance, around um, like budget, he's he's the guy that's uh, that that's that's really handling all that. Um, he's got some uh, some good DAO budget stuff. When we break off to do um, building, like if if you're really not into the nodes, like that's that's totally an option for you to like work on. Like a great great path to go is to like chat with Nerd, figure out how he's got struck. He's 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 like a DAO expert, so you're gonna learn a lot of shit along the way. Um, <laughs> ask him how he's got things set up, cool. and um, and you can learn learn a lot too. Um, so we're we taking like two or three minutes to just enter addresses right now. There is order. I like that idea. Let's uh, let's spend a minute or two thinking about. <laughs> Where we can put addresses, and maybe I'll come up with something. Yeah. Don't don't take mine. <laughs> That's a great, a great so avenue. Is like if you yeah. know people that are running helium nodes, yeah. they're probably going to be an, uh, amicable to running one of these nodes too, or people that they, they already are in the space. Uh, I, for instance, I kind of got really deep in the helium thing. I have a buddy that runs a lot of Airbnbs. He's like one of these Airbnb people. But a great, a, a great avenue for installing helium locations when I was doing it. And I could totally reach out to him. He's actually got quite a few contacts here around downtown mm. um, for probably like those balcony style um, setups if, if we wanted to go that direction. Um, oh, cool. yeah. Do do node operators get paid home tokens to like a steady stream like Helium, or is it more like when people walk through and, and utilize the location? What is the yeah? So as of now, as of now, the only the network incentivization is just this beta program grant. Um, so, unless we want to go to uh, fill out the paperwork for foam, which I think is totally a, like not a big deal. It's just somebody needs to deal with it. Um, like we could probably even get them dollar bills or whatever, like money to their bank account if if we really need their location or whatever. Um, but I guess as far as the DAO directly paying. Um, like it's just going to be a one-time like, hey, we'll pay you this much to put it on your roof for a year or two or something like that. Sure. I mean, no, I, I get that, but I mean, like for the for the operator, like let's say we found, let's say the Dow found we could put it on the roof here that on the space. So. Yeah. Are there tokens that go to those those beacons, or will they go to those beacons in the future? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so the, the beta program, no incentivization. Yeah. It's not even on the blockchain yet. The that's part of what's exciting about this, though, is probably, I'm guessing we're about a year, year and a half away from going live, like a mainnet sort of live, maybe even longer. We are still early. We are still very <laughs> early. And, uh, and so I think, um, that, but that's part of what's exciting, is like when it does go live, I think these things will be like breaking in. Um, so uh, that, that's, that's, that's part of the excitement. And this isn't, like, FOM has said they plan, plan on doing um, missions. So like once we finished our first mission, which is just to get these things up and running, yes. there will be other missions like, oh, we got like this little device, we want you to walk around with it and test it out for us mm -hmm. um, within your, your urban environment or whatever it is. Sure. Um, so like there's definitely, I think, potential for more grants even after this one between that and mainnet um, when, when the, the token will be flowing consistently. And I think like, I think part of the DAO, part of what's exciting about the DAO thing is I think it would be pretty cool to maybe even down the line do something like we figure out a way to use the 
the income from that to flow back to the community, you know, like and everybody participated would be really sick. That's, the way um, to do it. that's just kind of pie in the sky stuff right now though, because like there's a lot of work in here. Um, but I think especially because we've kind of established as a DAO early on, I think um, doing that later should be something that is totally doable, you know. Um, so Barry, how do we start building? Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's take a look at the manual here. And uh, I think do we have, we have this in the Discord, don't we? Yeah, does everyone have this? Mm -hmm. It's posted in Discord and the bit.ly links were shown earlier. But if you don't have this, just raise your hand. The bit.ly link was bit.ly slash ethsd foam or was uh, it? was bit.ly slash yeah, ethsd foam. So that's if you want to get to it yourself. Um, so uh, we can just take a quick look here. Um, this is kind of a diagram of all the all the stuff. Um, we have we were doing inventory at a time, and we've got like one 30 millimeter standoff spacer here that's like eh, it's not nearly 30 millimeters. So I am gonna have to order some more stuff. Um, but we can do a lot of building for this week. Um, you have the, the case here. We, you can see this one. We we drilled one out already, um, but that'll basically be the start for this evening. Is get, get, we got a, a template for the sticker there. We're gonna drill it out. Um, you got this back plate, and so what we'll do is we'll build all the components, and then we'll attach the back plate. You'll see some photos of that. Um, these things have LTE hotspots in them. Um, that's another thing on lo on these locations is power is can, can be an issue. So. We could potentially do solar setups. Um, ideally, landowners would let us like get some power to it. Um, that's something to be thinking about, though. Um, and then also, Wi-Fi would be nice too because then we don't gotta be paying monthly um, monthly data bills. But the, I don't think the data is gonna be that crazy on these things. Um, so all the uh, all the parts here. Um, like, I don't think we're here even to spend too much time looking at that. You'll, you'll be able to see all the, all the parts we got them all over here. Um, there's like, there's a few things that will, additional things that I need to get ordered and that are a little bit dependent on location is the antennas. Um, so depending on how close these things are to each other and where they're located, we'll use different antennas. A lot of times I use those like highly directional Yagi antennas. I guess I, I can give you all, like we were talking earlier, and I can give you all a little bit of an antenna education. I didn't have much of one until I got into helium. Um, the, the pole antennas, they're omnidirectional. And the, 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 way they, the way they provide, basically the pattern by which they share is like a donut. So it's kind of like coming out from the monopole, say this is the antenna, like it, basically you have like this, this, this never increasing radius up and down from, from, from the antenna in a, in a continuous 360 circle around it. And the, the bigger the antenna, the higher the gain antenna, like when you look these antennas up, they got higher gain. The higher the gain antenna, the, the narrower that, the narrower that, that beam is coming out, coming, coming perpendicular, it's not totally perpendicular obviously, but it's somewhat perpendicular. So um, the higher, same when you get up really high in the building, we don't want a super high gain antenna because you gotta get down, you gotta be able to scoop down below the building a little bit, right? But um, if we're like, if most of our antennas are, are perpendicular, then we can do like um, a really high gain antenna and go a long way. So the gain gets you more distance because you're focusing the signal more. Um, that's, that's an omnipole or like, a, or a dipole I think is what they call those. It's like basically just a stick sort of antenna. A Yagi antenna is kind of like one of those antennas that like, it's got like, it's kind of a V-shape like that and it's got all these little crossbars in it. You know what I'm talking about? It looks like the old TV antennas that everybody had on the roof and you get on there and crank it and turn it around. And that's because it's highly directional and you want to point it towards wherever the signal's coming from. Um, that's, a, that's a Yagi and um, these things have two antennas on them. They have a sending and a receiving antenna and so like, I haven't really got into the details on this yet, but I probably need it to, talk once we figure out locations probably, but um, like they'll go like omnipole on one and then for the probably the sending and then the receiving one they'll go like highly directional I think to really point at one of the other nodes or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's intense. Um, let's see here. 
they got all these tools. We got this really cool, I've never seen one of these before. They got these like, these, like really cool, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of bit they call that. Uh, step bit. Step bit, yeah. For, for drilling the, the holes in that plastic there. Um, screw that up. Um, let's see what else. We only have one static bracelet. Um, I think the, the really important component that we want to make sure we use the static bracelets for is the foam hat. It's got that FPGA board in it, and they're just like super custom, so we don't want to mess ours up. Um, so where are we starting the assembly here? Um, so the way I think we'll start the assembly is we'll um, we'll go and grab the plastic. Um, enclosures and bring them back to our back to the tables or like you can even we don't even have to do two by two like if you have one or two people that you want to group up with um, you could totally like come come to these little stations between the, um, uh, at the desks but uh, you go and get you get you one of these um, these enclosures I mean where where in this long ass document are we starting to <laughs> I'm sorry sorry I'm sorry let's go to the top and I'll show you where it's um, we'll go to um, uh, modifying the enclosure right there. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so if you guys want to get started, uh, we'll just drop a couple of these here, and then one or two people can group up and start drilling these holes. And then there's enough in each of these boxes to build two foam beacons. So, you know, some of you guys can start with the box, some of you guys can actually start drill your hand. building. <laughs> Which section is that? Right? Um, yeah, so no, no one's drawing. We'll, we'll start we'll just by take it to uh, him and we'll draw. Uh, the, the stickers on the, the templates. Just remember, it's measure twice, cut once. So like, take a take a really close look at the sticker and make sure you've got it figured out the orientation of the box before it's putting the sticker on, so you know like this is the orientation, this is top bottom. They show where the hinge is on there, and it's a little bit confusing. It says lid hinge right here. That's just giving you an orientation about what part of the, the box the hinge is going to be on. It doesn't line up directly with that little hinge thing right there. Um, so that's the hinges. Um, so some people can be working on that. Um, you've got the, this mounting panel here. Some people can go and grab a mounting plate and these, um, all the, like start digging through and finding all these little pieces. Um, you're obviously going to be running into other people doing the same, but... Yeah, um, and it, for those pieces, um, all those little, like, uh, screws and standoffs will be in this enclosure box. Um, they're actually labeled, so there'll be, like, a number on here, like, 38, and that'll correlate to the uh, part number on... So you can see the part number on all these, on this, in these diagrams, 31, 33, 27, 32, 46, and 34. Yeah. Those all correspond to... Um, Numbers that Chad has written on the um, on all the little screw bags. Um, the screw bags. And those are screw bags. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> Did you just call me? My dad would say, "Those aren't screws; those are bolts." Yeah. So we can start by um, doing that. These, these, these guys right here, these 30 millimeter standoffs are the ones that we don't have, and it's just killing me that I screwed that up. Um, so we, we won't have those tonight, but we'll get as much done as we can without them, um, and then we'll have to reassemble some other time. Um, kind of some ideas of like basically where they, you'll, get, you'll pick up those screws, you'll put them in the back, and then these are female to female um, standoffs. So you'll put the screw in the back, and then you'll kind of attach the um, that standoff to it. Um, so, so you do have a standoff that's on the right sides. Um, we no, we, we yeah, it's a it's a male to female, and it's the, it's just totally it's the wrong size too. They sent the wrong one. So we've got all the other standoffs. So we've so got all the other standoffs. Just the long ones will be missing. So the okay. ones on the four. These ones, ones, these ones you can get. It's just these four corner ones that you can't. So I think it's it's number twenty. Ones. Yeah, 47 or 27. Yeah, it's these 320. It's, it's number 27 that's screwed up. Did Bowie put this together for you and you bought it as a set? Or did you have I had to go online and make this massive oh, order and spin oh, a giant headache. Shouts out to Barry. <laughs> And then we can, if, if you want to start, if, if, if you're not doing anything, you want to start gathering hardware too, like uh, 
And let the building commence. We'll see you guys later. Thank you for tuning in.